Hey class, welcome back to Unit 4 Land and Water Use Notes. Where you, we're going to go through our 4D notes on forestry and rangelands. Uh, today we'll be covering the concepts in this unit of clear cutting, uh, introduction to sustainability, or continuing our conversation on sustainability and sustainable forestry. Uh, starting off, looking at our, our kind of big idea is the value of forests. So we talk about the importance of biodiversity, and uh, take a little bit of time here uh, to review. Um, really, when we're talking about value, we're talking about those four main categories. Uh, so the first thing we talk about, what, why are forests important? We put them into one category. So lumber, food, medicine. Um, this is our provisional, provisional value. Um, so we talked about this in unit two. Uh, the next couple things we look at is, all right, so forests give us lumber, food, medicine. They also do photosynthesis. They're a valuable carbon sink, and they help us to cycle nutrients uh, in our ecosystem. And because of that, um, they provide these support functions of our ecosystem. We also have uh, the ability of forests that they hold topsoil in place and reduce erosion. So this is an important regulating function. And then uh, the last one, uh, recreation. We like to go hiking and spend time out in the woods, uh, hunting, whatever it might be. This is a cultural value. So looking at our value of forests and biodiversity, uh, it's really important to understand their purpose um, in all these different aspects. As we talk about forestry and rangelands, um, these areas have valuable natural resources that we need for many reasons. And understanding how we use them and their management is important um, in our success in this unit. Starting off, we'll talk about different forestry methods. So we have to acquire timber. Um, there's a couple of ways and strategies that we use to acquire the timber from these forests. One, and, and really the worst one in terms of ecological disadvantages, is clear cutting. Uh, clear cutting is really not a tricky name. There's nothing uh, misleading about it. Uh, it's going into an area and removing all the trees uh, from one specific area and moving on to the next one. Uh, it's a great strategy f in terms of just being efficient, economically uh, very beneficial. Uh, we're not moving around all over the forest trying to grab different trees at different times and growth stages. It's just taking one area and harvesting it all at the same time. Um, and this limits competition and just really makes it convenient and uh, cheaper overall. Uh, disadvantages you can see with the pictures of clear cutting is when we remo remove the forest structure, uh, we're much more susceptible to erosion. So uh, the trees' roots, the living trees, going to hold this the soil in place. Um, any slope here uh, just allows the soil to run off. If the soil starts to run off down into our streams, um, this can cause issues with sediments in the streams, which makes the environment less hospitable to biodiversity that lives there, the, the different fish species and other um, organisms. And then uh, also there's less shade. So if there's less shade for this body of water, um, it can increase the water temperatures. So we're going to see an increase in temp here. Um, it can also increase the temperature up here right because we don't have shade in the soil so now we're changing these the the environment in which any organisms that are trying to grow here are exposed to with this increasing temperature um, we also uh, can can lead to uh, excess flooding and it, re it removes these carbon stores remember the forests are a carbon sink they take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and store it in their cells and if we chop those down and burn some of the, the uh, material um, or allow it to decompose, uh, that CO2 is just going to come out and back into the environment and being released. So the more that we remove the, the, car the, the forest, the more carbon that is released into the atmosphere. Other more sustainable forestry includes selective cutting and strip cutting. Um, these methods tend to be uh, designed to preserve biodiversity. So when we talk about selective cutting, we're uh, looking at harvesting specific trees from an area. Um, obviously, it's less economically beneficial because you can't just move through at a fast rate removing every tree in one area. Uh, but harvesting trees, typically larger trees, um, 
depending on the forest, uh, just maintaining biodiversity and selectively choosing which ones you're going to harvest for timber. Uh, strip cutting is just cutting in rows basically um, and then alternating based on years or time frame. So allow one section to grow to uh, uh, older age, to maturity, uh, and then harvest a section nearby. Uh, so this way you maintain some diversity. Uh, you also allow seeds from the uncut trees to uh, fall into these harvested strips and kind of restore some natural process, simulating more of a successional uh, type environment. Um, so this is beneficial in that way too, maintaining some diversity and keeping your, your you know, runoff and erosion kind of in control in these situations. You can see we have clear streams down here. Um, other conservation methods of forest, afforestation, again, planting trees, replanting trees in areas intentionally, uh, using sustainably harvest wood and reusing uh, wood materials are all ways that we can reduce our demand uh, for timber uh, so that we have to do this process less often. Um, what are some ecological impacts of timber harvesting? Uh, really logging and deforestation. Anytime we're removing trees, remember habitat destruction and fragmentation, uh, which leads to decreasing biodiversity. Uh, releasing that stored CO2, contributing to climate change. These are really, really the main uh, components of what's happening on a big picture, kind of global scale, um, and how this could be a, a larger issue for the planet. Um, one thing we do with timber harvesting sometimes is we create tree plantations. So rather than going into like a, a state or national forest, um, for logging, sometimes there's tree plantations available, and these are essentially monocrops, so they're specifically planted and spaced out, um, used for logging, and are periodically cut. Um, the, the downside to this is that this ecological succession is really kind of stopped in a way, um, that these forests never reach full climax communities. Um, they're all one species for the most part, uh, which can tend to deplete the soil nutrients, um, because they all have the same nutrient demands. Um, and so it's, it doesn't simulate what a real ecosystem should be and never allows it to kind of fully develop and finish. Um, so that's kind of the downside to tree plantation models. Um, sustainable harvesting is something else to talk about, and we've already kind of addressed this um, with fishing. But looking at the annual growth rate and sustainable yield, right? So we want to harvest at a high growth rate, uh, which tends to be about half of carrying capacity. Remember, we don't want to harvest at carrying capacity because we would be harvesting all the trees at their slowest growth rates. So we need to be aware of how fast they grow and harvest at maximum sustainable yield, or MSY. So to estimate that is one half our carrying capacity. So if carrying capacity is here, I divide that in two, say, all right, that's when my organisms, in this case the trees, are growing at their fastest rate. So we see that kind of exponential growth start to occur at this point, and that's where we want to continue to harvest. So it's important to understand um, at what population size we need to maintain to uh, allow the, the goal of harvesting at our MSY. Sustainable forestry methods, another method to maintain biodiversity in forests, protecting from pathogens and disease. Um, use the IPM strategies we've discussed earlier. Um, and use, utilize selective cutting methods tends to be the best for maintaining biodiversity. Um, protecting from frequent wildfires is another one. So a strategy of prescribed burns is, is frequently utilized, um, basically simulating natural fires but under more control so that we don't have the negative aspects of uh, a naturally occurring fire. Um, typically the, the public safety issues are, are the things we would like to avoid. So not having the wildfire spread out of control um, near residential areas where it can harm people. Um, it also reduces the frequency of those natural fires as well, uh, which is better for public safety. Um, and then, you know, fires are an important part of forests. They um, help to cycle nutrients uh, throughout the ecosystem and return nutrients back to the soil. So it, it is important to have these fires, um, but understanding, you know, their purpose and how to best control them so that uh, you know we kind of simulate a good win-win situation for the forest and for people. Uh, another use of land is rangelands. Um, we look at this map down here. Uh, the Bureau of Land Management 
really um, covers a lot of this area and these other federal lands, um, which are all, for the most part, rangelands. Rangelands are defined as grasslands, um, typically, and they're used for grazing livestock. Um, this is a good example of tragedy commons. It's really pretty much the example with sheep that they were talking about, um, that this is shared space uh, that is used, and it could be overused if it weren't managed by an organization like the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management. Um, ultimately, this is the largest land use category for agriculture, uh, more so than growing crops in terms of total amount of land space. Um, so the federal government or Bureau of Land Management uh, deals with uh, managing our raised lands. Uh, methods for sustainability here, rotational grazing, preventing de desertification, and reducing soil erosion. Because ultimately, if it weren't managed, we would get severe overgrazing, like you can see on the left here, um, compared to the right on this fence line. Um, overgrazing, and then in the, the forest, if we get deforestation, and these two combined together, we can lead to desertification, which is essentially depleting the soil of all its essential um, nutrients and fertility uh, so that really uh, it becomes dead essentially. Um, so desertification we'd like to avoid, so managing overgrazing deforestation are key.